Good morning, global family. Greetings and nuff nuff love is being beamed, live streamed to you from the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful Jamaica. So it is a, a joy for me to add my own words of welcome to those of my beautiful platform assistant, Temple of Light practitioner Sandra Cooper, and to say to you all from our hearts here, welcome, welcome, welcome. You know, I'm always amazed at how global situations such as 9-11 uh, of, of memory and now this global pandemic, how they bring out the worst and the best in us. Now here in Jamaica, we have been observing uh, the protocols and banks and stores and business places have been allowing customers in just a few at a time while everybody has waits outside on the street or they, you know, on the piazza for um, their turn to go in. So the other morning, there was a group of older people waiting outside the store, the customary three meters apart, when a young man jumped the line and went to the very front. Well, an elderly gentleman got very angry and said, look here, boy, I'll punch you down, you know. So the fellow turned back. In a few moments, he came back again, and then a lady, an elderly lady said, Lord, guide me and pilot me before I take my cane and lick this boy. It took me right back to my childhood when, when my grandmother, when I got on her last nerve, she used to say, Lord, guide me and pilot me so I don't send this picnic back to you. And in those days, of course, they didn't have GPS um, global positioning systems. Otherwise, I'm certain I would have gone directly to the heavenly kingdom without making any shortcuts. But the young man, in exasperation, said to them, folks, good morning. If you don't let me unlock the door, nobody is going to get in. So I just had a learning right there that sometimes we look at situations and when we're under stress, we interpret the facts in, in very different ways, don't we? we? We put two and two together and get 22 instead of four a lot of the times. So I want us just to be aware of this. Again, this morning I, was, I went very early to the supermarket. Older folk like, like I are allowed to go out once a day to the supermarket or to the pharmacy. So I went early and there was a gentleman there with a trolley full of goods, full of, of, of foodstuffs and purchases. And he had gone to the line that said cash only. So the cashier said to him, Cash only, sir? And he said, no, credit card. She said, well, you can't cash in this line. And he threw a real temper tantrum because it meant that he, he couldn't, he had to join a line of people with full trolleys. So I was standing next in line at, at a cashier um, for cash and credit card. And I said to him, just come over here, sir, and you can come in front of me. Well, he, he said, all right then. And he pushed in front of me and he was so he was so angry that he never even acknowledged my gesture. But that's okay, we are in, in trying times and I just allowed the, my personal GPS, my God positioning system to guide me and pilot me along the way. Um, well, he had a large amount of groceries and I, I went outside after him and he, it so happened as the universe always makes it, he was parked right next to me and I said to him, boy, I let you in into the line in front of me with that huge bag of groceries and you never even said thank you. And of course he looked very shamefaced and said, oh, I'm so sorry. And I said to him, no, don't be sorry. Just don't let the situation put you so far off that you forget the truth of who you are. You really are a wonderful human being. So have a good day. So today, my friends, I am entitling my talk with God as your GPS, you can't get lost. You must find your destination. And I'd like to start with a, a Sufi uh, teaching story about a, a, a very wise man who was going on a journey. And he knew his way, part of the way. He knew about 50% of the journey. And then he didn't know where to go after that. And he said, okay. He prided himself on his logic. He said, if I get halfway, I will then make a decision about how to go further. Well, he got halfway his journey riding on his donkey. And when he got to uh, the, the town that was halfway there, he said to the townspeople, what is the, the best way to uh, get to my destination? This is where I'm going. Well, some of the townspeople said, you must go by the river. It's much easier. Others said, cross the desert. Uh, that will be good for you. And others said, uh, go over the mountain. Go over the mountain pass. So he thought for a moment and he said, you know, Give me the town's most truthful person, 
and also introduced me to the person reputed to be the, the town's biggest liar. Let me ask the two of them and hear what they say. Well, the, the town's wisest person was summoned, and so was the town's biggest liar by reputation. And the wisest person said, go by the mountain pass. And the, the reputed liar also said, uh, go by the mountain pass. So he was quite perplexed. How come the truthful person and the liar both gave him the same advice? So he pondered it for a while, and he said, townspeople have suggested the river, the desert, and the mountain. I'm going to take the word of uh, the two people that I consulted and, 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 and go by the mountain. So he did, and he got there on his donkey safely uh, um, a few hours later. Well, he went to a local tavern to refresh himself to get some food and some drink and a night's lodging. And while he was there, he was recounting this tale of how come the truthful person and the liar both gave him the same advice. And there was a sage, one of those wisdom minds, you know, that you find from time, you come across from time to time, listening to his story. And the person said to it, the sage said to him, you know, sometimes we rely too much on other people's uh, opinions instead of consulting the inner wisdom within us that can really guide us to our destination. So he, he, the traveler said, well, Sage, why do you think both the wise person, the truthful person, and the liar both gave the same advice? And he said, well, the liar knew that the river route was the easiest route, so he told you to go by the mountain. And the truthful person knew that the river route was easy, but he noted that you had a donkey, and it would have made therefore going by the river in a boat impossible. So he also recommended the way over the mountain, and that's why you got the same advice from both people. But you know, friends, I thought about this story, and I thought, so often when we are challenged, we, we ask everybody, our best friends, our neighbors, our work colleagues, everybody, what do you think, what do you think, what do you think? And we don't think to go to the the place where we are sure to get perfect guidance, that inner power and presence within us that knows no obstacles. And so I wanted us, us to think about that this, uh, during this time when we are asked to stay home. I want us to think about the beautiful Jesus, the way sure, and how he so often went apart to meditate and to, to commune with God and to tune into his GPS system to keep him on the path that he had chosen. Today is celebrated by Christendom all across the world as Palm Sunday. It's a lovely, lovely story of Jesus riding triumphantly into Jerusalem with the palms and the, the, the green branches waving him and people shouting, Hosanna, you know, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And I think that Jesus didn't have a GPS as we do today, but he had an inner guidance system, which was his GPS, and he used God as his way shower. And so his practice of going aside to meditate is an, is an example to how we should be living in these times. And so I want to give you an assignment this week of just set aside 20 minutes a day to become still and to meditate on God. If you are already a meditator, then you you know how to do it. But if you are not, the internet is full of uh, instructions, instructions and guided meditations. Uh, you can go to YouTube. I personally like Deepak Chopra. I find him very calming and very wise. But there are, there are many to choose from. Just choose to spend time each day. Just carve out 20 minutes to become still and to meditate on the goodness and the greatness that God is in your life. Again, you know, when we read the stories of Jesus, we think, okay, they're charming stories, but they really are a lesson for each of us on how we can live our lives. And there's a wonderful example of how Jesus used that inner power, that GPS system that he was always in contact with. He called that inner power Father, and he relied exclusively on it to get him through his journey. And the story that I like that demonstrates this is this, I don't know if you remember the story of the, the fishermen at sea and a great storm arose and the, the billows were blowing and the, the waves were uh, threatening to capsize the boat and the, the, the disciples were terrified. Much as we are terrified now, aren't we, of what's happening around the world. But experiencing the same experience, going through the same situation, 
was the master. And what was he doing? He was serenely asleep in the back of the boat. And so they woke him up and said, Master, Master, don't you care? We might drown. And according to the story, he jumped to his feet and, and with a, a commanding voice said to the winds and the waves, Peace, be still. What a command. And according to the legend, the winds and the waves obeyed him and subsided and the place became absolutely calm. You know, friends, that's a story that it, it may be literally true or it may be a myth, but it is a teaching story for us. It is a story that shows us that we too can say to the vicissitudes of our lives, to the occurrences that we are experiencing right now in today's pandemic, peace, be still. You know, so when you're at home and you are, you are feeling frustrated and uh, the children are getting on your last nerve, you can say like my grandmother did and the old lady in the line at, at the shop this morning, guide me and pilot me, show me the way. And to your fear, to your misunderstandings understandings in the family, to the children who are making too much noise, to whatever the situation is, your broken relationships, your health diagnosis, whatever the situation in your life is, you can say, peace, be still, and watch the winds and the waves of your life subside and bring you to a place of peace and contentment and calm. So the after the storm at sea was calmed, Jesus and his disciples were able to relax and to give thanks. And there's another story that, again, I think is a teaching story for us. And it is a story of how we can look at our current situation differently. The disciples had been out fishing all night and had caught nothing. You know, when they got back to shore, weary and empty handed and wondering what they were going to cook for lunch and what they were going to give their families to eat. Jesus said to them, go back out to sea, and this time let down your net on the other side of the boat. And you can imagine these burly men having fished all night and being hungry and tired and saying, what does he know about fishing? Yeah, right, you know, go out again and let down the net. Are you crazy? But because they had deep respect for him, they obeyed him. And they pulled out to sea and they let down their nets on the other side. And according to the story, the, the catch was so great that they could hardly call it back to shore. And here we have a situation that's saying to us, when you are in a sticky situation, when you come up with nothing, when you feel like you are going under because there is nothing happening for you, look at the situation from a different angle. Look at the situation. Letting down your net on the other side means taking a different view, a different perspective of your life. And I want you to do that as one a part of your assignment in this time when we are staying at home. I want you to just take a pencil and paper and jot down a review of the first three months of 2020. If you had set your intentions and you had been to a goal setting workshop at the Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living or wherever you live and had, had set some intentions, review those intentions and see how far you have come and what you have, what you have accomplished. And then reset your GPS, your God positioning system for the next, for the rest of the year, for the next nine months. What is it I want to achieve? This is very important. You know, one of the things that, uh, that's been an, an enormous learning for me about being at home, being practicing this, this social distancing, is the fact that I have learned that we also need to practice fair distancing, to push the fear away by, by being calm and by using the meditation. And every Tuesday, when I go to the, the prison here in Kingston to conduct my class known as uh, Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life, I think about this because I think I can no longer go, the prisons are closed, but up to two weeks ago when I was going, I thought the rest of the world is being asked to stay home for two weeks and they're going stir crazy. And here are people who are incarcerated sometimes for years. And yet, in that institution, which is, uh, let me put it mildly, uh, it's less than ideal con living conditions, so many of those men that I encounter find their life's purpose. They're able to get in touch with that presence and power within them and to determine 
why it is that they have come to Earth. One of the things that I found amazing was one of the participants in the program said, I really am glad I was sent to prison. I said, really? How can you be glad that you were sent to prison? He said, well, Reverend, for two reasons. One, if I wasn't in here, I'd probably be on a slab in the morgue. And the other thing is, it took my time in prison to discover my love of teaching, to discover that I am able to explain really quite complex issues simply so that even people who can barely read and write or cannot read and write at all can understand me. I have come to be a teacher. I thought, wow, you know, and I, I applauded him. But another participant said, well, I know my purpose and I, I can't wait to get out to start living it. And I said, you don't need to start. Reverend Michael Record, our, our staff minister, one of our staff ministers here in Kingston, who is my co-facilitator on the prison program, said to them, you know, Jesus took 18 years to prepare himself for the ministry. Use your time in here to prepare yourself for your ministry in life. And your ministry doesn't necessarily have to be as a religious leader. Your ministry can be whatever you determine your life purpose to be. And you could see the lights going on in their, in their eyes. Yes, I don't have to wait. I can start living my purpose now. If I want to be a teacher, I can start teaching my cellmate. If I want to be a singer, I can begin singing right in my own cell and just imagining myself on stage to enthusiastic, approving audiences. Whatever it is that they decide that their purpose is, they could start living it immediately. And that setting of their intention changes their whole perspective on how they view their incarceration. And so I don't want to make a parallel between their incarceration and our having to stay home in the bosom of our families. But yes, we are restricted in, in many, many ways, restrained and unable to move about as freely as we would. So as we practice social distancing and stay home, we are going to practice fair distancing as well and use the time to reset our GPS. What is it we wish to accomplish? Why have we come to earth? What are we here to accomplish? And when this, this situation subsides, as it must, let us continue two things. Wouldn't it be lovely if each of us said, okay, once a week, we're going to set aside a day or a weekend or whatever, once a month, to just be with family and to, to, to allow all that we have had to do under this enforced situation to become a pleasurable interaction with our loved ones and our nearest and dearest. I just wanted to, to suggest that this is a time that we can use to our advantage to become better and to recognize the truth of our divinity and to, to live from the, the truth that God is our GPS and all is well. Uh, Dr. Ernest Holmes, who gave the world this great teaching known as the Science of Mind, writes in his textbook of the same name, and it's on page 146, paragraph 2, for those of you that like to check your references. I quote, We have within us a power which is greater than anything we shall ever contact. Just think of that. We have within us a power that is greater than anything that's outside us. He continues, a power that can overcome every obstacle in our experience and set us safe, satisfied and at peace, healed and prosperous in a new light and a new life. End of quote. That power, friends, the, the Apostle Paul said to us, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And what did this mean? Paul was telling us to rise in consciousness to a God-oriented state of mind, to let that mind that Jesus used that was in constant, continual contact with God be the mind that we now use as we face this, this global pandemic and rise to in consciousness so that every encounter we have with people on Facebook, on the phone, on WhatsApp, on through all our devices, let us allow every encounter to be an opportunity to lift each other up in consciousness, to comfort each other, to give each other hope, and above all, to use the one thing that knows nothing of social distancing, and that is love. Let love be the way of our heart and the heart of our way from now and forevermore. May your God positioning system guide your journey into pathways of peace and plenty. And may you know that you are never alone.
because God walks every step of life's way with you. God loves you and so do I. Namaste.